and subsequently has been pushing prices up since the spring. In Vancouver, Kier Junos, City News. Okay, guys, welcome back. We got another episode coming towards you of the 5W's interview show. Today, we have another very special guest, someone that I've known for quite a while now, and it was kind of around when I was getting my start in the career, and has always showed me so much love and so much support uh, at a distance, or when it's always just hitting me up to like check in or support me on projects. Uh, it's my dear friend, uh, Kier Juno, is also known as Casey Rosas, uh, and his music career uh, he's doing a lot of journalism, a lot of uh, music and artistic stuff and a lot of different avenues at the moment and I just wanted to have a chat, sit down with him and kind of see where everything is going, where everything's at. Uh, Super Bowl guy, I'll have all his information in the description for you to check out everything that he's doing. Uh, so, how are you doing here? I'm good, Reese. Thanks for having me on. Nice to be on the program. For sure. Is there anything else you'd like to say about yourself, introduce, uh, explain before we jump into our five questions? Just in terms of like my biographical data, like things that people should know about me? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know, I like to walk around by myself a lot. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, um, well, uh, right now I'm living in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, just kind of like a stone's throw away from Granville Island here. Um, the weather's a bit colder, I don't mind. Uh, I like to layer my clothes, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> does that does that state your curiosity about me? Yep, yeah, that's that, that's good. We got some, I feel like people know exactly who you are now. Interview's done, we're calling it that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kier, we're just gonna jump into our first question here, and that is our who. And uh, I just wanna ask, who is one person that you've met in the last five years that has changed your life slash career? Hmm. Interesting. Who's one person that has done that, I guess? Well, you know, I think um, before I started working in television, um, when, when I got my first job in television, I was, uh, I, I didn't expect, I didn't really expect to come in. I mean, I, I was walking up to a coffee shop up from my house one day uh, in Abbotsford. And, uh, at the time, I think I was working at a music store. I um, wasn't making a whole lot of money. Uh, and as I was walking in, the managing producer of another television station was walking out. Um, I didn't meet the producer there, but the coffee shop owner, Jazz Anand, um, yeah. he's the guy that uh, you know let me know that that producer needed an intern at the time at a station. Um, so he threw my name in the hat, and then within the next couple of weeks, uh, yeah, my life changed. I started being a production assistant, and... Um, I mean, I've, I've always been like a print journalist, I guess. Uh, so when I had an appetite for TV um, just because I didn't know anything about it, really. So unexpectedly, Jazz and Ant, uh kind of helped me find the next step in my career. Uh, just the humble coffee shop owner. Um, yeah, him. Damn, that was... That was not the answer I was expecting, but it's a definitely an answer I'm very pleased with. <laughs> <laughs> what were you expecting? Liz? I don't know. As I was writing these questions, I was like, I was like, man, this one sounds so profound and like it's like so deep, and it's like, is it like, is it like too deep for the show? And then it's just like humble coffee shop owner. I was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, cool. Uh, that's great. Well, shout out to that guy for putting it together. Cool. So we will just fly into our second question here, and that is our what. And I want to know, what inspired you to take up performance art as a career? Uh, be that in your singing slash music performance or your work as a news anchor. Yeah, I wouldn't really call news anchoring performance art. I mean, it's a performance for sure. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, it's probably the least rock and roll thing you could probably do. So I lost <laughs> a lot of street cred in that regard. Um, but when it comes to being a musician, I think, uh, you know, I think I always had a inclination of propensity for music um, since I was a little kid. Uh, what inspired me to start performing was probably, I don't know, pro probably, uh, you know, listening to The Strokes for the first time when I was like 13, 14, back when HMV was still a thing, you could buy CDs, like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I bought Is This It, that was probably the first record that I ever bought, fell in love with it, still have it, bought it on vinyl, um, and uh, 
just diving into a YouTube poll of seeing these guys play like in New York City back in the early 2000s, um, just being so, so enamored with the style of mm -hmm. that kind of garage rock revival in New York City, um, that was just so cool to me. Uh, so that's probably what inspired me to start performing um, in, a, in a rock and roll band. That's pretty sick. It's like I've, because I've always really enjoyed your music from the first time I ever heard it. But it's always been like in my constant rotation of rock music alongside everyone else. But Thank I've, you. I've never like known what to compare it to. But like now that you like you threw the Strokes name out there, like it, like it, I, I see I can like start seeing and connecting a lot of the dots of like where it's all like fitting together. Totally. My my main uh, influences as a guitarist are probably. Two guitarists from the Strokes, Albert Hammond Jr. and Nick Valenci, probably my yeah, uh, the two most important guitarists to my style, I think. Yeah, well, that, well, that's really cool to know. Uh, they're definitely a pretty amazing band that uh, definitely deserves to be paid tribute to. Cool. Well, we will jump into our third question, and that is our where. And uh, I just want to ask. Uh, You've been around a lot, probably played a bunch of shows at a bunch of places, done a lot of reporting in a bunch of other really interesting places. So where is one pivotal place that you will never forget? A pivotal place that I've like performed or something like that? or One place that's kind of like uh, stood out to you that uh, it's kind of like burned in your memory, whether it was a very important moment or some place that is a compound of moments. Right, okay. Um... Well, about four years ago, my band Casinos had the great fortune of opening for like this big like glam rock revival band called The Struts. Um, they played the Imperial Theater in Vancouver in, in November 2016, and we were asked to play in the bill. And we had never played a sold out show before to like, um, I think there were like 800 people there. Um, it's a different one. It, and I, th th those don't really come around all the time. So it was just, it, it was a moment that reminded me to... I guess, savor the present moment. Um, because you just don't know when fun opportunities like that are going to pop up all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, at that level of, at that level of uh, production, I mean, every cog in the show that night, from monitor techs to uh, production managers, everyone is really, really into what they're doing. Um, I mean, they offered me like security. I was like, "What do you? What do you mean? Why would I need security? Because I'm not used to that kind, that kind of uh, that kind of privilege." But at the end, I actually we actually had to opt for it because there was a crowd to walk through, and we would not have been able to get our gear off stage that night. Anyway, I mean, I digress. That night was very mem memorable because uh, I mean, the feeling of just having like hundreds of people uh, scream along to music. Um, that that feels good. I still get off on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very fair. That's I mean, that's a that's a pretty sizable show. It, it's it's got to be like a, a lot of energy rocking around in one room. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, it, it. I just love the degrees of separation between that band, the Struts that we opened for, and, mm -hmm. and some of my own influences. Because Albert Hammond Jr. just produced a track with the Struts, like I think, uh, yeah, just last month. They just released really a track together. Um, so like, oh, it's kind of cool, like these degrees of separation uh, between these rock and roll bands that I have played with. And and everything kind of like eventually admired. intertwines. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's there's so many moments like that, Reese. Like, I think um, besides that, it's probably like, the first, maybe the first time I played at like the Biltmore Cabaret in Vancouver, probably one of my favorite venues to play in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. um, played there with casinos during uh, Westward Music Festival last year in 2019. Um, and it's just such a pleasure playing on that stage. It's uh, it's great because you could play it, and then you also see your idols on it as well, uh, touring from around the world. You know, um, I saw Albert Hammond Jr. there with the band. You know, we kind of that as an outing. So that's another very memorable place for me. Nice, uh, that's a great answer. Very pleased with that one. So yeah. we just jump into our fourth question right here, and that is our when. And I just want to know, when did you write your most meaningful song or news article? Well, I'll, I'll speak to maybe the most meaningful song that I've written. Uh, probably one that's, I don't know if it's the most meaningful, but it's very memorable to me. Um, I think it was in 2014. I was traveling around Europe on like a shoestring budget just by myself. I was using like couchsurfing.org, um, sleeping on dudes, mattresses, in dorm rooms <laughs> for free, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and 
I just I met a lot of fun characters out there. I mean, that was uh, that was, that trip for me was uh, just a coming of age sort of trip that I had the great privilege privilege to have. Um, you know, I had such a thirst for independence that I probably wanted to actualize since I was a little kid. Um, I was always getting lost, right, mm-hmm. <laughs> all the damn time. Uh, so traveling by myself was just uh, it's sort of par for the course. Um, when I was out there, I probably wrote a, I, I wrote the song called Jim Hank the Casinos about a guy that I met when I was in Paris who kept telling me that he really wanted to prove something, and he didn't. Uh, he just wanted to prove something to everyone. Mm-hmm. And he didn't. He didn't say who exactly or what exactly. He just wanted to show them all, right? Um, so I wrote a song about this guy, and um, yeah, it 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 sort of is a chronicle of his dreams and our interactions. Um, I've always been motivated by character-driven stories, and that storytelling mm-hmm. shows up in my songwriting as well. So it was a pleasure to write that. Damn, yeah, it's, uh, I can definitely attest to that. Cause like, as far back as I can remember, I, one of the things I've really enjoyed about your music and the stuff that you've put out with casinos or even your other work is, I feel like it's always very interesting to listen to lyric-wise. I feel like there's it's always something going on that I can't quite nail down or like understand because I, I didn't have this behind-the-scenes context to like where these stories were coming from. Uh, the ones like Cafe Racer and Jim Hang and like Bad Decisions, just so many things going on. And it's like, where are all these like elements? How? What's the what's the thing that intertwines all of these obscure things to one together? It's I, I don't have any prime examples or quotes ready to cite, but you you reference a lot of kind of like off the beaten path words and like stuff enters into like your music. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you noticed. Thank it's you. Um, hear, like, that's probably that. that's probably just because of my background as a writer. You know, I always like to play with words, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, you know, I think the best kind of writing is when you use a lot of concrete language. Um, abstractions are fun too, but I really love just concrete language things that you can grasp. Because um, it doesn't matter if you don't have the, I guess, the context for a song. You, anyone can still grasp the objects that I'm that I'm talking about, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then they can put on their own interpretations on it. Nice. Cool. Uh, so this is winding down to our last question here, which is our why. Uh, and it's a, very, it's a pretty simple question in all, but I guess it's got kind of like some weight to it. And uh, it's a simple question of why did you guys start the band Casinos? Why did we start it? Yeah. What was, what was the process behind that? What was the process? Well, uh, you know, it, w- Casino started when uh, my best friend and guitarist Zach and I were probably 13. Um, we, we did it because, I mean, this isn't really the most, I don't know if this is the most interesting answer. We did it because it's like, we just loved the lifestyle of our, of the artists that we were inspired by. We just loved the aesthetic. We loved the vibe. Um, we loved the energy. Um, it, not unlike what a lot of people, uh, uh, we had a passion not unlike what other music fans had, <laughs> you know, about their favorite artists, right? Um, it's just that we uh, had the ability to have that for ourselves and try to emulate that energy as well. Um, Casinos has been around for almost, God, I think it's at least 11 years now, I think. Probably we've been around for 11 years. Damn, that's, that's, that's quite a while. It's longer than I was expecting it to be. Yeah, uh, we band started in like 2008, 2009, wow. I guess. So it's, yeah, so it's a long time, you know, everyone's changed a bit, the music's changed a little. Mm-hmm. The mix, the mixes sound consistent, mind you, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, which... Which I, 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 maybe there's just a certain way to mix casinos. I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you want to talk about the why, I, you know, I, it's, it's hard for me to jump into 12 year old Kier's mind, except for the fact that let's do this because it's fucking cool. Like, like let's do this because we want to. It's that, it's really, it's really that simple. So um, you started it back when you were 12? Yeah. Wow. It's... That's how long Zach and I have been playing together at least. That's, that's pretty young nice to like be jumping into a band that's like it's. Has it been casinos the entire time, or is it was? 
Then there were a couple know. of other band names, mm -hmm. um, but I think we probably called ourselves Casinos starting in 2010. That's wow. It's quite. It's neat to see it like trail back so far into the past, and like so, like back to like you, like I know. past history. We're like a satellite, not really Voyager. We just keep going <laughs> through space. Oh boy. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down and answer my five simple questions. Uh, is there anything else you would like to say to these guys and to the audience before I wrap it up on a quick outro? Oh, that, that's so interesting. That's the question that all of our journalism professors told us to ask at the end of our interviews. Very good, Reese. <laughs> um, is there anything else I would like to add? Ooh, well... Besides playing in casinos, I, I play in some other projects as well. I'm the guitarist in a band called Western Jaguar. And then I also have uh, my, my own kind of solo project called Lowercase Dream, which is, you know, a kind of uh, amalgamation of a bunch of different projects. Casual police sirens. Is that a fire truck? Yes. It, uh, it is loud, right? I sleep with big plugs on <laughs> <sighs> cool. So you plugged. Uh, I'll have links to all his different things in the description. It's going to be a long list because he does a lot. Um, but without further ado, thank you all for watching. It has been a great time. This has been my guest, Kier Dunos, also known as Casey Rosas, and his music, Alter Alias. Thank you for watching the 5W's interview show. My name is Reese Setter, and I will see you next time. <laughs>